Well, another company doing exactly that is Six, a capital markets technology platform that is a key sponsor as well of this event over these three days. It's my great pleasure to welcome up Bianca Pishola, who's the founding chief operating officer at Six. Through the company, she's deployed data-driven investor relations technology for more than 100 publicly listed mining companies. Bianca is on the founding team of Save Canadian Mining, an advocacy group dedicated to reinstating the tick test within Canadian capital markets. Other members of the founding team include Eric Sprott, Rob McEwen, and numerous captains of industry based in Canada's mining sector. And in fact, SIX has been a great partner this year at our annual breakfast during PDAC, the largest event on mining in North America that's Africa-focused. Uh, they came on board and live streamed that event, which included Mark Bristow, of CEO of Barrick Gold, who gave the keynote address alongside numerous ministers from Canada and Africa. Bianca is also committed in philanthropy, where she serves on the One Silver Lining Board, a Canadian nonprofit which she founded, supporting youth through conferences, young people through benefit concerts, as well as TEDx talks and scholarships. Bianca Pishola, welcome to the stage. Thank you. That was so kind. Uh, to kick things off, I'd like to extend a few words of thanks. Thank you to Gareth, to Sebastian, um, and to everyone in the chamber for allowing us to take part in such a momentous event. It gives me a tremendous amount of pride to be able to power the digital arm of Africa Accelerating. And as such, I would be remiss if I didn't also thank the six team who have been so instrumental in allowing this uh, to go on so smoothly. Special thanks goes to Jane and also to Jay. Uh, they have been absolutely critical in, uh, in these last three days. And then a final word of thanks to everyone who is attending live globally, hundreds of you uh, all over the world. Uh, big thank you for everyone participating. So to kick things off, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've seen as the, the major shift in capital markets, in the private industry, and how the world is moving digitally. For a very long time, investments in Africa have been made by the people who have actually gone there. There have been people who have been able to see the opportunity with their own eyes. And as a result, this has limited the number of people who understand the opportunity for Africa. And now in our COVID-19 world, it's harder and harder for investors to travel to see it with their own eyes and to gain that understanding. COVID-19, in addition, has created historic levels of uncertainty from an economic perspective. The fallout from zeroed interest rates, trillions of dollars of money being printed, and massive stimulus spending will be with us for years to come. Markets are in chaos and the rules of the game are changing. But out of crisis comes opportunity. As investors reevaluate their investment thesis, there is an opportunity for African businesses to come out ahead. To understand the opportunity a little bit better, we need to understand where we've come from. Uh, in the old world, investors were forced to rely on broker dealers and financial advisors to execute trades for them. They paid high transaction fees and used expensive terminals and the process was exceedingly slow. Global opportunities in Africa and beyond were not recommended by your broker or your advisor because they didn't have a relationship with those teams, and so those companies never made it onto their Rolodex. However, investors today are more self-directed than ever before. They do their own research, they leverage the advice of others in their decision making, and they make a decision to participate at any company, at any time, anywhere, with a click of a button, from their mobile, tablet, or desktop device, investors can choose to embrace a company's future or to abandon it. This shift in investor behavior is significant because right now there are more than 300 million people who participate in self-directed investing in a universe of only 100,000 global public companies. There is an opportunity here for those who can capture it. Africa is already an attractive investment opportunity, you all know this. Uh, the population is booming, innovation is happening, and there's already 438 companies in Africa generating over $1 billion per year. So from a valuation standpoint, Africa is a very attractive investment opportunity for global investors. But Africa has wealth and also understands how to spot their own opportunities. Capital will not just flow into Africa, but will flow within Africa enabling opportunities for the continent and for the people within it, which is expected to total 4.3 billion or one quarter of the world's population by 2050. 
All of these forces are positioning Africa for a catalyst moment. And now whether or not the catalyst moment will be good or bad is defined, in my personal opinion, by three core things. First is the ability to access capital. Second is coverage of African companies. And then finally, it's the ability to create a community of local and global investors. When it comes to Afri uh, accessing capital, it will come from the next generation investor. Uh, and this next generation investor, they will find you online. From investment forums to social networks to crowdsourced research platforms, there is no shortage of resources where investors can discover and discuss investment opportunities. In today's world of 24 seven news cycles and polarization, the flavor of the day is increasingly to be negative. It's no surprise then that most companies choose to abstain from the digital conversation altogether while focusing on the hard work of developing their company in an effort to produce the next Catalyst event. The problem with this strategy, however, is that when that next Catalyst event does happen, after years or, or uh, decades of hard work, you don't have the audience familiar enough with your company to understand the broader context and new investors that see the news and begin their research process are deterred by all the ongoing negative conversations and therefore hold off making an investment. As a result, your Catalyst event doesn't unlock the full value of your progress. But today it doesn't need to be that way. Connecting with investors at the exact moment where they're considering to invest their money is now possible in the world of participatory investing. And to understand a little bit better about our thesis here, uh, we've enabled access to capital through SIX by connecting investors who see the future with the companies building it through live interactive virtual summits, like the one you're all on today, hosted on the internet by video. We promote these summits through ads, social media, and email. It allows for hundreds of qualified investors to be in a room with you, eager to understand your vision for the future as they consider where to invest their money. The magic of this and the world we're now in is unlike a conference room or a stadium that can fit hundreds of people or thousands of people, virtual investment summits in theory have no limit to their number of participants. As a result, your access to capital and the investors that hold it is unlimited. When it comes to creating coverage, it will come from the next generation analyst. This next generation analyst looks different than the analysts that have come before because there are zero barriers to entry for them to share their investment thoughts and ideas. And they'll be compensated by the crowd rather than by companies or by banks. The next generation analyst will be a citizen journalist. And this is already happening. You can see it on Twitter, on CEO.ca, on Stockhouse, and now increasingly on SIX. The SIX platform connects investors and analysts and companies all in one place. The next generation analysts are able to host their own summits, much like this one as well, sharing their unique perspectives with the existing and prospective followers. The crowd will reward the creators and the content that they find valuable. And finally, communities will be built by the next generation company. In the new world of participatory investing, in which crowds choose kings and regicide is a new normal, it's dangerous to leave crowds unattended especially when many of them have already gathered on forums such as Stockhouse, CEO.ca, and many others. Rather than participating in a strategy of avoidance, the next generation company will proactively engage the crowd by inviting them to participate in building their companies. SIX invites investors to submit questions, leave feedback from management, and engage in a dialogue, conditional that they reveal their identities. And by design, we're able to identify the detractors, passives, and the promoters measuring by a unique metric, which we call the Investor Net Promoter Score, or INPS, with an aim of generating community support. All of these trends are accelerating with COVID-19, and they need to uh, adapt, and, and we need to overcome physical barriers and liquidity shortfalls. Uh, it demands a solution that enables self-directed, participatory, and decentralized investors to invest in the companies on the continent of the future. Thank you very much, appreciate it.